Welcome, everyone. Good boy, Tucker. This is learning at its most fun. Hi everyone, and welcome to another practice management takeover. And today we have someone I'm super excited to either introduce you to or welcome back for you because you've probably seen her before. But this is Kate, and she is just absolutely educated on the CRM and has some wonderful insights to share with you all today, specifically on task management, which if you're anything like me, you definitely need help remembering all the wonderful little things flying around in your head and potentially on your to-do list. So I'm really excited to get some advice from Kate today as well. So <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Thank you so much for being here. You bet. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to everybody today. Um, as Jack said, my name is Kate Gian, and I'm the founder uh, and one of the lead coaches here at Simplicity Ops. Uh, and most importantly, I'm a longtime Redtail user. Um, and so I'm excited to get to share with everybody today some best practices around, um, you know, utilizing Redtail to manage your tasks and efficiently delegate. Um, and so this comes from my experience having, you know, used Redtail as the operations manager of an RIA um, where, you know, we were really only using red tails like a glorified Rolodex, if you will. Um, but lucky for me, I got to attend a red tail university um, where I became quite inspired uh, when I learned all that red tail was capable of managing, which was a heck of a lot more than just a glorified Rolodex. Um, and so I really, you know, dedicated myself to mastering red tail and building out systems and processes to manage, uh, you know, the organization of our contacts. Uh, how we manage our tasks, how we manage our calendar, how we manage our sales pipeline and all of our accounts. Um, and once, you know, we kind of built that foundation, I got into building workflows to standardize and, you know, systematize the way we managed all of the repeatable processes that we do on a weekly basis, you know, uh, onboarding a new client, um, contributions and distributions, address changes, beneficiary changes, um, Took me years to figure all this out and countless hours with the lovely Haley Mandrup who taught me everything that I know. Uh, but um, it ended up being time really well spent because ultimately uh, it allowed us to run a super streamlined, proactive, high touch, personalized client service experience. Um, and so fast forward to today, I started Simplicity Ops as a way to offer my expertise to you guys, you know, firms like yours to help uh, organize your database, streamline your daily operations so that you could spend more time, you know, nurturing client relationships and doing what you love and not stressed about, you know, the making sure that your internal operations are dialed and running smoothly. So um, that's kind of my uh, background. Um, I'm excited. This is probably my favorite of all of the, you know, functions in Redtail um, is you know, the, this task management process. Um, so let me, I'm going to uh, bounce between Jack today, Perfect. the database and also the slideshow. I should mention to everybody that Everything that we're going to cover today is going to be available on our website. So if you want to download anything that I cover, slideshow, you know, uh, some of the, the other graphics that I'm going to show today, everything will be available. I'll show you where that lives on our website at the end of this conversation. Oh, thank you, Kate. That's so, I, I love that the resources are available for everyone too, because this is also a hard process if you're not used to it to implement. So any aid or any help that we can give or kind of give each other. I'm all for it because it'll help build those habits. Absolutely. Totally. I got you. So I want to start by saying here at Simplicity Ops, we believe that Redtail should be the hub of your practice for all things, contact management, task management, calendar management. You can see what I'm getting at here. Only when these systems are truly dialed, do you have the you know, foundation to be able to you know, report, run, access good, clean data? Um, and so I hear you guys say all the time, garbage in, garbage out, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, Kate, that you're saying so many affirming things already, and it's only been like three minutes, but... <laughs> Well, Absolutely. we're really passionate about, about what we do. And 
And um, what we're going to focus on today, again, is tasks. Um, we had done a previous webinar last year where we took a really deep dive into task management. I'm going to go a little higher level today and focus more on delegation. If you're interested in watching kind of the, the prequel to this, um, that will also be on our website. But I'm going to go ahead and just <clears throat> jump into it unless you see any questions off the bat, Jack. Perfect. All right. So um, we're really going to focus today on how to manage your tasks within Redtail, communicate with your team within Redtail, and then be able to run reports to measure you know, bandwidth, productivity, um, kind of see what's going on firm-wide. So uh, with that, I'm going to jump into Redtail. Um, for the most part, we're going to focus here on our Today page. Our Today page is the most frequently accessed page within Redtail. It acts our uh, to-do list, right? Um, my hope for everybody listening today is that this is going to replace your post-it notes, your legal pad, uh, and centralize all of your client and firm related tasks within Redtail. So every morning when you log in, you know, we're going to open up our today page and we're going to create, you know, a comprehensive list of everything that you are expected to do today. Um, you can see I've got my list of stuff uh, that shows the start date of today. However, unless you're a total rock star and you get through all of your action items day over day over day, chances are you have some past due activities. You're going to want to roll over or reschedule all of your past due activities so that you have visibility to everything that's going on. Because as you see it right now, I've got my list of stuff that I have to do today, but I got a bunch of stuff hanging out from you know earlier in the month that I do not have visibility to. All right, so what I'm going to do first thing is take a look at all of my past due activities. Any activity that is associated with a date, I'm going to complete them so that they uh, are time stamped and saved to the contact record on the date that I had, you know, the review meeting or the introductory call, right? So I'm going to complete those. All of these other tasks are things that I need to work through today, tomorrow, this week, all right? So by clicking this top box, it's going to select all of my tasks, and I'm going to reschedule them for today. Now, what do you know? I've got a whole long list here of all the things that I need to do today. Um, we're going to get into these numeric values that I've assigned here, but the reason you can see here why I have given them, um, you know, the the priority and importance is so that I can very easily prioritize my day. I can see the most important things up the top and the you know least important things down at the bottom. One of the other recommendations that I'll make to you guys here is this is a lot to look at, right? This is a lot to prioritize every single time I come back to this page. So if there's things that are you know uh, a lower priority that I can move off of my today page. Um, so it's just less to have to work through and less to have to prioritize over and over again when I come back to this page, I recommend that you, you know, piece these out or push them forward to a day when you have a little more bandwidth. All right, so I'm going to get these guys off my page uh, and I'm going to move them, let's say Thursday, I've got a bunch more time. Um, so I'm going to move these off to Thursday. So now I have a much more uh, workable list of action items that I am responsible for doing today. Um, one, so one of the things that I have found super helpful from a delegation standpoint is when you add a new activity, we are huge fans of templating things. Here is kind of an overview or like a list of um, activity templates for, again, all of the repeatable things that we're doing on a, a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? I'm all about working smarter and not harder um, and in an effort to not have to type the same thing over and over and over again, create yourself a template, all right? The beautiful thing, I'm gonna use this Benny change as an example. It pre-fills a very clean, concise subject. Um, we've got the start date being today, it puts it in as a task. It gives it the category for Benny change, which you know, if you're an advanced user here, I have synced with an automation. So the, the triggering event is this category that's gonna fire off uh, the workflow that's going to explain to Courtney on my team who is responsible for doing beneficiary change exactly what is expected of her to execute this request. Kate, I love how long this list of templates is. I'm curious, is there anywhere that you have these accessible? Yep. 
the, they're all on our website. You can download um, our list of uh, activity templates and, and, and create them uh, yourself. So yeah, absolutely. That list is available on our website. List is awesome. This is, I don't even, I think you have every topic covered on here, actually. I do, like, <laughs> we try. Through it. It's evolving. Yeah. We're, we're constantly learning and adding to it, but yeah, we, uh, you know, we'll get to the, at the end of this conversation, um, I have an exercise that I'd like everybody to do. That's going to be helpful to, um, just take a look at what you do on a daily basis. And that's, that's how we created this list. What is everybody doing on a daily, exactly. weekly basis? And how can we standardize the way we operate? Um, and so these templates are super helpful. I want to point out here that every activity that you enter into Redtail needs to be linked to a contact record. If it is a client request, we're going to link it to the client's contact record. If it's operational in nature, we're going to link it to the firm's contact record. So there's never a case where a task isn't assigned to a contact record. Um, and reason being, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to dig it back up if you can't pull it up under a client's contact record, all right? So I kind of went high level here of all the fields that um, need to be filled out. I'm gonna uh, open and edit this and show you some additional um, fields that I suggest you take advantage of. So the beautiful thing about the template is it pre-populated some of these fields for me. So it reduces the amount of you know typing that I'm having to do. Um, Courtney on my team is the person that is responsible for executing this request. So the attendee essentially is the person who this task is going to be assigned to, all right? And what I need to do, let's say I took this call from Maggie Investor, um, you know, regulatory requirement is that we log all client correspondence. Um, and so we're going to do this in a couple of places um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So. The linked notes section is the field that Redtail has created that is, you know, compliant um, and, and time stamped and dated and not editable. So in the case of there was a discrepancy or something, um, it, you know, it would hold up in arbitration. But essentially, this linked notes field is where I'm going to say that um, I spoke with Maggie. She needs to update a Benny on her IRA. All right, whatever the, the conversation that we had with Maggie. By saving this as a link note, it's going to push this to Maggie's notes page on her contact record. Time stamped, dated. Versus this description box is what I'm going to focus on today. This description box is what we are going to use to delegate to our team. This is where I'm going to log whatever I had previously emailed Courtney about this request or texted or direct message or shouted down the hall to Courtney, as it relates to this beneficiary change, we're going to put in the description box. The description box is intended to be used for internal dialogue. All right. So you can see here, because I use the template, there's a couple of fields that I need to fill out so that Courtney has the information that she needs to be able to, you know, prepare the Benny change paperwork for the custodian. Um, and I'm going to put in here um, my communication to her with the date, my initials, so she knows who to come back to if she has any questions, um, what I did, what needs to be done, and when. All right, so I'm going to say here, what's today? Today's Pi Day. Happy Pi Day. Oh, my gosh. It is. That was not intentional, but happy Pi Day, Kate. Happy Pi Day. So I'm going to say that I... Uh, spoke with Maggie, you know, I can see linked, oopsies, see linked note, need to update Benny this week, whatever, right? Um, and now Courtney knows what needs to be done. I, you know, pre-filled the information that I received from Maggie while I was on the line. She can reference the conversation that I had with the client she knows who to come back to if she's got any questions. And one thing that I skipped over, but I want to emphasize here, in an effort to reduce unnecessary external communication, I'd like to centralize and house all of the, you know, my communication to Courtney and um, the conversation that I had with the client in one place. So to do that, we like to use this importance field and the priority field. And I'm going to pull, I have a, a legend that we use, again, downloadable from our website. But essentially, this is how I'm going to communicate to my team 
the expectation or like what, what I told the client uh, in terms of like a timeline. So a high one is something that needs to be done before the end of the day. All right. Uh, uh, a two is something that needs to be done before the end of the week. Um, and a six is like an ongoing project, not time sensitive, can be done whenever, you know, you got the time. Um, but we're not keeping projects on our legal pad or our post-it notes anymore. Everything is going to be in red tail. All right. So basically by I'm telling, you know, Courtney, we need to update a Benny change. The start date is going to put this on Courtney's today page today. It's linked with uh, uh, an automation you can see here that's going to launch the Benny change workflow that's going to take Courtney through how to prepare paperwork, how to send it out, make sure we get it back, save it to the client file. Essentially, the, uh, the activity is your call to action. I need you to do something. How you execute that request is the workflow, all right? Um, and I'm able to tell her when this needs to be done and allow her to prioritize her day or her week, however, you know, works out for her. Yes. How long awesome. so far? Oh, and I, I absolutely want to affirm what you're saying, Kate, that this is a process that is retrofitted to each person. It doesn't totally. necessarily look the same for every single human because that's a big thing that comes up in trainings is if, if there's like this crisis, if you're not doing it exactly the way that I'm explaining it, you're doing it wrong. But just like you said, this is, this could be different for X. This could be different sure. for Y. Like we need to keep that in mind this entire time, make it fit for you and your team. Absolutely. It's one of the things that I say, like day one, when we work with uh, clients is I don't care to be right or wrong. I'm going to just give you my experience of what I've seen work. All I care about is that internally you guys do it consistently, that you communicate, you know, the same way that everybody in order for this to, you know, run like clockwork, we have to have mutual adoption by everybody on your team. People need to use templates. People need to use the tasks. People need to communicate within Redtail so that you're reducing the amount of places where you're having to go to figure out what you're working on. Like there's nothing more inefficient than having to go to Asana to look for a task, going to your email to look for tasks, going to your text messages, going to Slack, like my goodness. Standardizing and centralizing this place all within Redtail linked to a client contact record makes being able to operate as a team possible um, and being able to manage an efficient office and run reports based on this information. So I want to show you, I want to get into that a little bit more um, and how to use this as like a, a management tool um, to measure bandwidth, uh, to see what people are working on, to help delegate even yes. better. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Especially if you're in a management position, because speaking as someone who's not, I can tell you that one of our biggest, my biggest complaints from clients is that they don't know what their admins are working on at all times. Absolutely. As using the CRM to do that, Kate, can take a huge weight off of your manager's shoulders. Absolutely. I skipped over one thing that I do want to, I want to show everybody this. Um, I kind of breezed over it, um, but I wanted to show you an example here of how but kind of a, a layout of how to use this description box so that I can tell Jackie where I am on something or what I need her to do. Um, and she can, you know, this is an example that like Joe and I did on, uh, on my team of, I need him to do something where he's at in the process. So that in the case that Joe is out or I am out that you can very easily pick up someone's task and, keep working on their behalf or answer a client's question or, you know, productivity doesn't halt if somebody is out of the office, you know, exactly. client calls in and says, Hey, I need 10 grand. I'm like, okay, cool. Got you. No problem. Um, I'm out on Thursday and you know, you feel the phone call. Hey, I talked to Kate. She said that she was going to get me my money, but I'm not sure when. And you're like, Oh, cool. I can now pull up this activity and see the communication that was had, the trades needed to be placed, that they'll settle on Thursday, and that you can expect to see the money in your Bank of America account by the end of the week. Very difficult to do um, if you're operating off of a legal pad or post-its. Yes, because no one else can see those post-its. <laughs> we your chicken scratch, right? Oh, I would never ask them to, oh, that, <laughs> no, or just go ahead, Kate, keep going. So let's talk. So once we have kind of standardized the way we manage our task load, there's a couple of different ways to manage, um, measure, and just see, like get visibility of what people are working on. So my today page is specific to me. These are my tasks that I am the attendee on. 
all right? I can go to activities here and I can see um, Courtney's activities. Ooh, she's a rock star. She's got no past due, look at her. Uh, I can see what she's working on today, all right? I can see what she's got coming up this week, tomorrow, whatever custom date range, okay? So I could literally go person by person to see what someone's working on. There's a report, there's two reports in Redtail that I like even better. Um, so if you click on the, the reports tab here on the left-hand toolbar, um, I have favorited a couple of them, um, one of which is my activities by contact. And so this is gonna put together a really pretty um, Excel doc uh, that will allow me to filter it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So um, actually first, I'll show you filters first. So I can put in the date range. I can see, you know, uh, what is everybody working on this, this quarter? Um, I could filter it specific to a specific contact. I could uh, filter it to a specific advisor. You guys get what I'm getting at here, right? I can show just open tasks, what people have currently on their plate, or I can show, you know, things that have been completed or a combination of the both, all right? So uh, I'm gonna apply this filter for this month. And now I'm going to generate a really beautiful export. Love that. That spits out this Excel doc. So now I can, you know, filter it by date. I can put in my filters and, uh, you know, filter it just for, you know, my different team members to see, oh, geez, you know, Courtney's really overloaded this month or, or Catherine's really overloaded this month. We should, you know, do a better job, you know, delegating things. Um, from a management standpoint, I find this to be a really helpful report to get kind of a pulse on what everybody's working on. Um, one of the other, any questions so far, Jackie? Uh, no questions on this specifically, but I was, uh, now that we have a moment, um, would you mind making your screen a little bigger, Kate? Oh yeah, you bet. Thank you. Let me, uh, is this report itty bitty? It is very small. And then when we jump back into the CRM, I think when we switch to reports, if we could just expand that page a little bit too. I think it's so um, what I was showing here is you can uh, filter this report now. And I can say, I just want to see, um, you know, Courtney's activities. What does Courtney have going on? Um, you know, obviously we can open this up and see what she's working on. We can see, mm -hmm. um, you know, what kind of request it is, who the client is, uh, filter it by team member so that I can get a pulse on what everybody's working on uh, and better balance workloads. Yes, because the worst thing you can do, I think, to someone is overload them. <laughs> especially in like a current position, <laughs> but it's just, well, yeah. And, and it's just, it's just nice to have this, this visibility to, yes. um, we use it like on a Monday morning staff meeting, like, Hey, what does everybody have open? What is everybody working on? Um, you know, is, is there opportunity to collaborate or, uh, you know, better delegate? So I love that. Yeah. Opportunity to work together, potentially, maybe somebody needs help and is a totally. little hesitant to ask, giving them the opportunity. Kate, that's awesome. Absolutely. Um, and then one of the other workflows or one of the other reports is uh, a, a workflow report. Uh, let's see. So like I mentioned, oh, were you going to say something? Oh, nope. All yours. All right. Okay. Well, like I mentioned at the beginning of this call, the task, the activity that you put into Redtail is your call to action. I need you to change the address. How you change the address, the step-by-step, -step, prepare the paperwork, make sure you get it back, save it to the client file, submit it to the custodian, email the client to close the loop. That is the workflow. The workflow is a, a set of standard operating procedures that follows a um, chronological timeline, if you will. So um, that's a whole nother conversation that I'd love to have with you. Um, but for those that are using tasks and workflows in combination with one another. This is a really helpful report to be able to see what workflows are open, outstanding, who, you know, who, who they're assigned to, again, to be able to manage bandwidth and, and see what's going on. So uh, same gig, you can export it into an Excel doc, just like that last report and filter it any which way. I've overloaded the system because this, we have too many workflows launched. <laughs> Um, but you get the point. It's gonna it's gonna come up with a, a very similar Excel doc that allows you to filter it, measure bandwidth, 
see who it's linked to. Again, just to, to see what kind of open action items um, are outstanding or upcoming within your practice. Questions on this? So we did get an interesting kind of different way to look at the report too. Totally. I'm sure you know this, but if you weren't linking to a contact, could you run this for just an associate? Like just for the person or the user potentially who was- Oh yeah, absolutely. Entity? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I try to avoid that though. Yes. I have seen people accidentally launch workflows or um, assign activities to- the great abyss, like there's no contact link. So if the client calls back in, let's use my example that we were just talking about with, um, I'm out, I took the um, ACH, you know, distribution request. They ask you, um, hey, I talked to Kate, she's out today, where's my money? Um, if I don't link it to the client's contact record, you're gonna have to like unnecessarily dig around to try to figure out where I'm at on the process. Versus, you know, if, if the activity, is assigned to Maggie's contact record. Maggie calls back in. All you have to do is open up Maggie's contact record. Mm -hmm. And you can very easily see all the open action items that are assigned to not just me, but to you, to anybody on my team and be able to pick up where I've left off. That's a really good question. And I love your approach to this, Kate, because the easy thing to do, you're totally correct, would be to just link it to the user and kind of let let it go in the abyss of Redtail. Yeah. But you're completely right. If you wanted to easily access it, and even better, like you're saying, organize it. Sure. Definitely link it to a contact, because then it will, won't be in the abyss. It'll be chained to something. So while you can do that, John, I don't advise it. I would definitely do what Kate is suggesting, because it will keep you more organized. Well, and you're... <clears throat> Uh, to that, you know, same note, you um, now can build out like a historical timeline on a contact record. Mm -hmm. You know, when I go to prepare, let's say, you know, my um, service model is so that I meet with her twice a year. Um, when I go to prepare for an upcoming meeting with her, I can see all of the notes that my team has had with her. I can see, you know, all of the um, action items and activities that um, my team has done for her. Um, I can look over here and I can see all of the workflows that have been you know, um, executed since the last time I met with her. You get what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. I want to go back and talk about that workflow report one more time. Yes. One of the questions that I get on that is, um, well, can't I see my team's workflows here under this workflow tab? Yes, absolutely. However, um, I, I like exporting it um, so that I can filter it and see you know, who, if I'm trying to measure bandwidth, I want to be able to see, I want to break it out by team member. Um, and so I like to, I like to, to generate the uh, Excel doc to be able to do that. This is a, a good overview um, and to be able to see my team's workflows at a glance. But if you want to do, if you want to edit it or filter it at all, you're going to want to export it into that Excel doc. Make sense? I think so. You laid everything out very, very clearly, Kate. Excellent. Um, okay, so this, I have a kind of a, a fun exercise or challenge for everybody um, that, oh, why don't I just show you, that um, I'm going to encourage everybody to do as a way to improve your internal, you know, delegation. Um, and so if you're like me, um, it's a little uh, overwhelming at times when you've just got too much on your plate. Um, and so one of these, this is a great exercise to evaluate what you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, uh, figure out, you know, um, what are you really good at? What have you mastered? What do you love doing? What energizes you? Mm -hmm. um, figure out kind of some of the things that you're not quite so masterful at, or some of the things that you really just deplete to and that you don't enjoy doing, create a, a whole list, um, Literally take your time, spend a week doing this and jot down every single thing you do over the course of that week um, and, and give it a value and figure out what is it that you're good at? What do you not enjoy so much? And is there somebody else on your team that might be better suited to do those action items or activities that, you know, energizes them and fills them up to take them off of your plate um, to free you up to be doing more of what you are good at? Um, we should be having fun with this, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to focus my time on the things that I'm really good at. Uh, 
to eliminate some of the stress and, and feeling depleted at the end of the day. So I'm going to show you um, exactly what I mean. We have this little uh, T chart here. This will also be available on our website. Um, and I want to challenge everybody to create a list of all the things that you do and put them into one of these four quadrants. Um, and, you know, as a team, everybody on your team needs to do this to, to figure out what is everybody working on? What are people really enjoying? What are some of the things that maybe we, we discontinue doing? If everybody hates it and it's not, you know, uh, revenue generating or providing value to the client, maybe we just bag it all together. It's just a really good assessment to figure out what is everybody working on and what do people enjoy doing? Um, and, and we want to hear from everybody about this. So here's some posted gaps. We're really big, you know, problem solvers. And, um, we, uh, on our website, want to hear from everybody, what are the things that you do not like and that you are not good at, and but need to be done, whether it's a client servicing type thing or a marketing type thing or what have you, um, we want to hear from everybody about what these items are so that we can help you try to devise a solution. Um, whether it's you know integrating technology or creating a template or a workflow to just standardize the way we do it so that it's less of a burden and more of a, you know, a, a love or like action item. Um, and so I'll show you on our website uh, what I mean. Um, so on our website here, simplicityoperations.com, under uh, resources, again, all of this uh, will be available um, in the recording. Under this practice management takeover, I've linked all of the things that we've covered. Um, our activity priority legend. Okay, you guys can see what I'm getting at here. Um, but we've created like a, a Google form here where we want to hear from you. What is it that you are not, that you don't feel masterful doing, that you don't enjoy doing, that your team doesn't enjoy doing? And let us try to solve that for you. Um, and then we want to have a, a follow-up, just kind of a Q&A with everybody to address some of the frustrations or concerns and provide you guys with some solutions. I think it's a really fun exercise. Um, we did this as a team um, several years ago where we literally like sat in the, the conference room during a, a work on the business day mm -hmm. and on a whiteboard wrote out what does everybody do and what of those items are you know valuable to the client. What do we need to do to you know keep the lights on and, and make sure the business is operating? Um, what do people enjoy doing? And really give it that that you know kind of emotional value, um, so that we're able to delegate those tasks and people are doing what they like to do um, and eliminating and automating and integrating um, some of the other stuff that we that that doesn't need to be done manually. So. Uh, I challenge everybody to go through that exercise. Again, all of those uh, documents are downloadable on our website. Um, I think it'll be a fun exercise. I think so too. And if anything, it'll be a good little reflective exercise to do for yourself. Absolutely. Um, I hope that there's no one in the audience who's hesitant to delegate. I know um, there are people in my own circles that are a little hesitant to delegate things, but I just advocate that if you're a little hesitant or you're sitting out there going, well, it's better if I do everything. Sure. It's definitely not. <laughs> um, really your client ends up being the only one suffering because if you're stretching yourself too thin, doing all of these little things that you could be delegating to somebody else, then you're not actually putting a hundred percent into those things that really deserve your time and your skills. So take that Absolutely. into consideration. And, and I hope what I showed today, um, I, I recognize that delegating is very difficult. And I'm one yeah. of those people like, hey, if I want it done right, I'm going to do it myself. But by creating templates and writing workflows, I can rest assured that my team has, has the, the set of standard operating procedures so that they know what is expected of them. They know how to execute the request. Um, they know the timeline that we've set, you know, to, to manage those types of requests. And it eliminates some of the confusion or um, just uncertainty in your position when you have a set of guidelines and, and framework to operate within. Um, and so 
it's really not until you have templates and workflows and things like that, that, that I felt really truly comfortable delegating to the rest of my team and that I knew that clients were going to be served as well by the rest of my team as they were by me, because I had taken all, you know, my processes and procedures that were formerly in my brain and documented them within. Yes. So. Oh, and I, I, it can be so challenging to take those from your head and try to put them on paper. I don't want to discount that at all. Um, but I will say that's where people like Kate and I come in. So if you ever do need help, you can schedule a training with us. You can work with, with wonderful firms like Kate's, who is absolutely delightful. Um, and we'd be happy to help you kind of get that information out of your brain and onto paper because we, I totally get it. That can be challenging to try absolutely. To everything in there to try to get it into a system. That, that's a lot of work too. Absolutely. And um, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It took me years to figure it out. And hundreds and hundreds of hours with Haley and the training team trying to really become masterful um, at Redtail. Uh, and so we're here to share our experience and our expertise with, you know, all of you Redtail users. I have put um, my website up here um, where we've got a bunch of free resources for people to download. Um, you know, we get asked all the time, well, what workflows should I have? What are the repeatable processes? And part of the reason why I suggest you go through this um, elevate and delegate exercises to figure out what are the repeatable things that you're doing, uh, not just to be able to delegate to the team, but so that you know what workflows you need, you know what templates you need. Um, but to give you kind of a boost or a head start, you're welcome to check out our website um, where we, you know, created lists like that for you to give you a, a head start. Yes, and I did. We did have a number of questions about Kate's website, so I really want to emphasize to everyone who had that question it is on the screen right now so in case you're yep. just tuning in um and then Kate do you actually mind if I ask the our wonderful live audience a question and Please? I know I, I'm so sorry if you're watching the recording you don't type this in anywhere because it won't go anywhere <laughs> but um I'm curious in the chat if you're still with us are there specific tasks that you don't like doing like Kate mentioned is there anything that pops into your head right away because I could totally understand if you're sitting there going, well, I kind of like doing everything. That's totally fine with me. Um, sending money. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. An easy one to delegate. A common, a common workflow, a common activity template. Absolutely. I get it. <laughs> Scheduling, resetting passwords. Oh, oh great one. Yeah. Good job, Natasha. That was an awesome one. That is a good one. You don't need to do it. Maybe somebody else on your team wants to take that off your plate. Let's make them the password keeper. Now, I like this one. Um, Laura said, getting all of the team to buy in and make this a priority. Kate, ah. do you have any potential insight? Because I know you work with lots of different offices, lots of different people. Any, you know, any advice on insight? I mean, on any insight on buy-in? I, I know what you're saying. You. It's really funny. I actually had this conversation with a client this week. Um, because I say over and over and over again is the key to running an efficient practice is the mutual adoption by all team members, um, to use these processes and implement them. Um, and so one of the, I think, values of working with a consultant like us, um, is you get to hear firsthand our experience and why it works. It's, it, we, we've done this now, you know, 30 plus times over and over and over again. It's a proven process that works. Um, and I'd like to think that I'm pretty convincing. Uh, so in some situations, uh, it, the client that I was talking to last week is like, wow, it's so beneficial to get to hear from you firsthand and have you deliver this message because it's so much better received coming from you than it is coming from somebody internally. So, um, I mean, if you need help convincing um, your team, show them one of our webinars uh explain to them all of the values that i just you know kind of rattled off um we all we all at the end of the day want to save time and and spend more time doing what we love and serving our clients and providing a really proactive personalized experience to those that we work with um that's really difficult if everybody is operating kind of on their own um, and you don't have a standard way of managing your firm um, that becomes very difficult and uh, like unnecessary wasted time and that's one of the things that we really try to help solve um, but I recognize that buying is difficult so if you need me to try to sell them on why it's important <laughs> I'd be happy to <laughs> oh yeah and Kate's great at it I definitely will attest to how wonderful Kate is <laughs> <laughs> trying to be convincing 
Well, and on that note as well, we did get a couple of other kind of chatty comments where they are also struggling with buy-in because of those already existing habits that we kind of touched on at the beginning where, you know, it is hard to break away from, yeah, things like paper. I was a huge advocate of calendars. Like I loved writing on calendars and then I started working at Redtail. So I had to, had to make the switch and it wasn't easy. So if you are on a team that is currently hyper-focused in Outlook or something else that's digital and they just don't want to break away, that is another situation where I'd say it's definitely worth the time to sit down with everyone and go over the benefits of Redtail versus those benefits of having it somewhere else. Because, oh yeah, go ahead, Kate. No, I think- Piggybacking on that, Redtail makes it easy with the integrations, you know, with- um, uh, linking Outlook to Redtail, Calendly, G Reminders, being able to <clears throat> take advantage of those integrations. I'm not kidding. I think the greatest efficiency pickup is integrating an online calendar management solution. Um, I, When I first started, I was manually scheduling. We met with clients quarterly. Um, and so I spent, no joke, 20 hours a week trying to schedule Hey, Jack, we want to have you in this week. It's time to do your annual review. Are you available during these times? Okay. You take a couple of days to get back to me. And, you know, of course you get back to me and none of those times are available. And I'm having to manually go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And when we created our online calendar uh, with specific availabilities based on what type of meeting that it was with, you know, we only met with clients on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays at these specific times, we were no longer you know, getting steamrolled by our calendar with back-to-back meetings. Um, the clients had visibility to what, you know, um, the, the availability was. Um, it flowed beautifully into Redtail where we could link it to a client contact record, launch, you know, appropriate workflows. And I'm not joking, it saved me hours and hours and hours every week, not having to go back and forth to schedule. Um, so if I can, if I can preach one efficiency pickup, an online calendar is a huge, a huge oh, time saver. I completely agree. And I will say Redtail does integrate inadvertently with a number of scheduling softwares through totally. your calendar. And we also are working on integrations with a number of those wonderful scheduling softwares like G Reminders is a direct yeah. um, integration now. So we are working on expanding those integrations, just like Kate said, because they are so integral in everyday business now. Right. Oh, absolutely. I, we had gone over that slide where I showed, you know, that Redtail being the hub of the practice and what, you know, one of our five core competencies or um, the uh, uh, like five core functions of running an efficient practice is having a solid calendar management solution. Uh, and that's one of the things that we help implement because I'm, 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 I'm probably preaching to the choir, a firm believer in having that online calendar. And I don't think you can say it enough, Kate, because it is worth the trouble. I know it may seem like if you're not already integrated, getting everything over might seem like a lot of work. And yes, it is probably a day, but once that day is over, then you have your calendar integrated and you don't really have to worry about it after that. Time well spent. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. And that we didn't, I don't think we said this phrase enough today because a lot of these webinars are based on saving you all time because your time is the one thing you can't really get back. Like you can can get back items, you can get back. um, Well, no, I can't think of anything else at the moment, but time is one thing you absolutely cannot recycle or get. So we want to make sure that you're using it in the most effective way. Using it wisely. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. Awesome. We did get an interesting discussion question. Um, so uh, this user is new to their office and um, they assign tasks to all staff members with the intent to keep everyone informed of what's going on, kind ah, of what we're talking about today. Great question. But um, they're saying that they find it annoying and difficult to know who is to be responsible for completing each task. Great so, question. Yeah. So what observation, Kate, would you have regarding this situation? Yeah, you got it. I would never recommend having more than one person on a task. Um, Oh, that's a great recommendation. Yeah, no, reason being like, if it needs to pass hands, I'm going to do what I need to do. And then I'm going to change the attendee to whoever on my team is next up. Um, I do not want to see on my today page stuff that I'm not responsible for doing. It, you know, we're talking about time. It is unnecessary, wasted brain space and time to uh, look at my list here. Imagine, you know, I'm working through the day. I, I get 
one of my top one, the, you know, the, the, I, ACH was 30 grand. Now I'm going to come back to my today page, figure out what I need to do next and what I need to do next. And I'm revisiting this page multiple times over the course of the day. I don't want to prioritize and then reprioritize to only reprioritize again, a bunch of junk that I'm not responsible for doing. So if your team wants to know every single time something is done, I think that's overkill, but we, we won't get into it. Um, you have the ability to notify your team. So rather than keeping everybody on as an attendee for something that they're not responsible for doing, uh, let's say um, this is Joe on my team. Let's say Joe says, hey, Kate, um, please let me know when this is done. The client needs it urgently. And like, just for my own peace of mind, can you please just let me know when this is done? This notify option here, I can select my operations team, which I know Joe's on my operations team. And when I save and complete this task, Joe is going to get one of those red tail system generated emails that says, what do you know, Kate saved and completed and executed this request. And so now Joe has peace of mind that I've done what he's asked me to do. And I didn't have to, he didn't have to be copied on there as an attendee. I didn't have to send him an email. I didn't have to text him or DM him or shout down the hall. He got that, you know, clean, pretty nice system generated email that told him that I had executed his request. That is an excellent question. I agree. And that was a great answer. Cause I personally, even though I've only been in the CRM for two years, um, I've never heard that strategy before though, Kate. And that that's excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Only have one person assigned to help with the efficiency. I think that that's a great idea. And the only exception to that would be if it's an appointment and like you and I are both on the appointment together, you and I would both be attendees because it would block it off on our calendar. It would block it off in Calendly or G Reminder. So it would show that you and I are unavailable at that time. But unless it's associated with like a specific time on your calendar, I would only have one person on every activity. And if I did what I needed to do, you know, with this check deposit, and then I need to send it off to somebody else, I would make my little note about what I did. I would take myself off. I would hand it off to Catherine. And now it's going to leave my today page. It's going to show up on Catherine's today page to do whatever she's responsible for doing. Oh, that's so nice and so easy. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I did want to circle back to this one. Kate, hey, what scheduling software do you use? Uh, we've always used Calendly, um, and we just recently changed to G Reminders because of the direct integration with Redtail. You know, we're about to switch over to G Reminders too. I think. Yeah, I'm thrilled because it's yeah, just that direct integration. I did get I'm a couple of questions about do we integrate directly with Calendly, and I will just say again, we do not. Um, nor do we direct, it's not schedule direct integration with it. It's a, is it a hub. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm always beating myself up. I don't know that one, yeah. um, but excellent. Well, I will give everyone, I'll say our last call on questions. Um, Natasha did have a question regarding the use of digital calendar instead of scheduling directly with the client. She um, kind of wanted to see if, does that take away from the relational aspect of with the client at all, converting to a digital calendar versus calling them or having to no. reach out manually? So we always, I get this question a lot. So we've crafted a really nice email, just introducing our clients to um, our new online calendar management tool. And we kind of, you know, uh, explain it as a, it's just a, a more efficient way for the client to book with us. Um, they have the ability then to push it to their online calendar. They have the ability to, um, it sends them a nice confirmation email that you can, you know, wordsmith and make it super personalized with the zoom information or an attachment with driving directions to your office or, you know, whatever, um, you can really customize it and personalize it. So it still feels really personal without having to call or send emails, um, and the only pushback I've ever received is like, uh, well, my client, she's, you know, much, much older. She's not someone that is going to check an email. And in that case, like, okay, have, have your one-off, you know, lady that you call on a quarterly or annual basis to schedule her review. But I would say 90 plus percent of the time, clients are just fine receiving a nice email with a link and they receive the nice confirmation back from Calendly that says, you know, the confirmation meeting time, you know, uh, Zoom information or driving information, 
a, a list of documents that they need to bring in for the meeting, what have you. You can totally customize it. And I've never really received any negative feedback from that. Excellent. These are really great questions. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. There, I, I love all of the engagement today, which I just think makes these webinars so much more valuable. So thank you very much, everyone, for being just as involved and excited to be here as we are. Um, that being said, we do have a little bit more time. Um, I did notice we have had a couple of things come into the chat, but I just wanted to take this time to review some things. And I think that'll also close up some of these questions. Um, Kate, for the yeah. resources on your website, is there any way to search them or do you have a maybe a preferred method for getting through them or maybe? A yeah, great yeah. question. Um, so on our website, um, I have this resources tab here uh, with our blog, you know, media that you can see here, all of our free downloads. Um, if for some reason you didn't get a chance to ask a question or you thought of something later, uh, we do have an online community um, where you can, um, it basically it's, it's a forum for RIA owners and operators where you can come ask us questions and collaborate with other people that are in a similar position to you. Um, that is available on our website. Um, and we, you know, we're pretty speedy at responding. If anybody has any follow-up questions or, you know, wants to pick our brain about preferred online calendar tools or what have you, we're happy to help answer those questions if you want to join our community. Excellent. Well, Kate, thank you so much again for everything today. I always love all the content that you supply to Redtail. And I, I feel like even if you had not seen Kate's last webinar, you should absolutely give it a listen and a watch because how insightful she was last year was just adds on to this topic this time. So thank you so much for being here, Kate. And thank Thanks you for, for having me to Redtail with us. Um, we look forward to hosting you again very soon. And yeah, we look absolutely. forward to having you all join us again next month. Thank you all again. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800 206 5030 option three for support or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.